Ever since I can remember, I've always had a lot of fun playing all sorts of different games on PC, and I've amassed quite a collection of them over time. So, Microsoft Pinball Arcade, Star Wars Rogue Squadron, Earthworm Jim, Intel Madness 1 and 2, Genome, Sonic 3D Blast CD, all sorts of Sim games, Sim City, Sim Tower, The Sims, Streets of Sim City, and Copter, Lego Island, and others beyond that. If there's one thing these games all have in common, it's that they either are not able to play well on new computers, or they just don't install at all because they're written on such old platforms. Like uh, some of these have 16-bit installers, which modern computers just can't run anymore. Now, of course, these old games are still a lot of fun and I want to play them again. So obviously, the answer to that is to build myself an old computer. And I'm going mid 2000s style on this. And I thought while I'm at it, I might as well go ahead and have some fun with customizing it too. So you can see I've got all my different parts here, all ready to go. I tested out the motherboard and everything else just to make sure it's all working. So let's take a look at what's going to go into this computer. Now first up is the CPU, which is an AMD Athlon 64 3000 plus. This is a blazingly fast gaming CPU with a single core running at 2 gigahertz with a 512 kilobyte L2 cache and it takes 89 watts to power all that extreme gaming performance. And this works in the Socket 754, which was one of the very first um, consumer grade 64-bit CPU sockets. And speaking of the CPU socket, we've got the motherboard right here, which is a Biostar T-Series T4 6100. Now this is a gaming motherboard powered by the NVIDIA Enforce 410 chipset which has an integrated G4 6100 GPU. This also supports DDR RAM up to 400 megahertz in speed, and it uses a PCIe slot instead of the older AGP slot, and it even supports some SATA hard drives and CD drives, as well as the old style IDE for both CD drives, hard drives, and floppies. And as for memory, we've got a full gigabyte of DDR PC 3200U running at 400 megahertz. And as for graphics, I've got kind of a multiple choice here. So on the left is an NVIDIA GeForce 7300 GT, and on the right is a GeForce 6600 GT. So the 7300 is my first graphics card from my first PC build. I customized it with a Zelman cooler to keep it nice and cool and quiet and just to look that much better because it's got a blue LED built into the fan. But in case this ends up being too overpowered for the games I'll be playing, which is a possibility, the 6600 here should do an admirable job. Now for the hard drive, I wanted to make sure I was going to get some good performance, so I got a Western Digital Velociraptor. This is a 10,000 RPM hard drive with a 500 gigabyte capacity. And these have been around since the mid-2000s. This one was made in 2014, so it's cheating a little bit on the age. But since it is basically using the same technology from the mid-2000s, I'll forgive that little bit of age difference. Now, of course, to load everything on there that I want, I've got a Sony DVD-ROM drive, as well as a Sony 3.5-inch floppy drive. I'm pretty sure this is a 52-speed, but I can't confirm that 100%. But either way, I'm sure it'll be fast enough. And to power the whole thing, I've got this really nice piece of junk cooler master 350 watt power supply. So this has seen very little use in its life since it was picked up a long time ago to replace another power supply that failed. And I opened it up and checked it out. Everything looks fine in there. It shouldn't have any problems as long as I don't overload it. And with the components I've got, I don't think I will. So it should be perfectly fine. Now to keep that crazy powerful 89 watt CPU cool, I've got a Thermaltake V1AX CPU cooler. This is another one where I'm sort of cheating a little bit because it was made in the late 2000s, maybe about 2010, but it is based heavily on the Zalman coolers from the early to mid 2000s. So it definitely has that look about it and it's made to support Athlon 64 processors on the K8 754 socket. So this one, I decided I'd give it a pass. 
And then for some other parts that are just for the fun of it, I've got this Sunbeam Reobus fan controller, which will fit in one of the um, five and a quarter inch bays. I've got these Logisys green CCFL lights to put inside. And this, I don't even know if I'll be using or not. It's a Thermaltake Star Force fan. It just looked ridiculous, so I went ahead and bought it. Maybe I'll find a way to put it to use. We'll see. For the power supply and other cables, I've got this blue sleeving kit. I also got a new acrylic window to fit on the side of the case. So there will be some customization there. I'm also planning on putting a fan on the side of the case along with that window. So I've got a nice grill as well as a filter. Now the case does already have a 120 millimeter exhaust fan, but it doesn't look cool enough. So I got this Evercool aluminum quad color LED fan, 120 millimeter. This runs it up to 2000 RPM. So I will definitely be hooking it up to that fan controller to keep things quiet. But this should look really good in the back of that aluminum case I've got. I've got a copy of Windows XP 32 bit. And as for the case to hold it all, I've got a Lee and Lee PC7A with some custom design work done for Computer Builder Velocity Micro. This is a high quality aluminum case with some really nice design work. It's well organized, just really well built overall and lightweight so it's easy to carry. And I literally found this completely unused in a dumpster about 10 years ago. It looked like it was in good shape so I pulled it out and brought it home and cleaned it up. So to start off, I'll load up the motherboard with its parts. First thing I'll put in is the RAM. Installs just like any other modern RAM. Give that a good tight push into there. Everything snaps in place. Okay. And the CPU. Let's lift that. And let's see, make sure that this matches up where it needs to go. Uh, this way, it looks like. Yeah, that just drops in. Pull the lever down. And it locks it in place. Now let's get the CPU cooler out. Install that on the motherboard. The box is massive. Let's see here are all the different parts for installation. The cooler itself. In this big plastic shell. Snap it open. So this should be some additional installation hardware. And then there is the cooler itself. It is some very nicely polished aluminum. And the copper heat pipes and copper base are plated in nickel. Looks like it's well polished on the bottom, so that should make some good contact with the CPU for the best possible cooling. And then for the fan, it's got a nice big one right in the middle. And this should have a blue LED to light it up. Yeah, that's a cool looking heat sink. Let's hope it cools as well as it looks. Let's see, this should be the correct installation bracket for this motherboard. Look at these. Is this a thermal paste or is this something else? Yeah, it looks like this is a thermal paste. Interesting way of packaging. So this fits into the slot down here. It just kind of rocks back and forth to attach to the clips on the cooler mount. First thing to do is to get this Thermal paste onto the CPU. It's kind of like squeezing frosting onto a toaster strudel. Now this is a single use, so I think I'll just uh, use the packet itself to spread that. Nice even coating. There we go. 
That should be good enough. So I'll just slip this away oh, first. Got to take this off. Get that nice shiny base exposed. Now I can stick this in. Place the cooler on top there. Just clip in place. There we go. That is now clipped onto there. I can still kind of rotate it around, but that's fine. Just as long as it's making good contact with the CPU, that is all that's really important. And we've got the fan cable here, which has a speed controller on it. So I'll look more into that a little bit later. Now for the case, I want to modify the side panel to have an acrylic window on there, as well as an intake fan. I don't have the tools to do that here though, so I'm just gonna take that panel off of there and take care of that work and bring it back over. That's just two thumb screws holding that on. Pull that off. And I will be right back with this. All right, so cutting the window didn't go quite as planned. I was wanting to make kind of a fancy pattern on there to look kind of like some of the 2000s era cases, but that turned out to be too difficult. So I just cut out a nice big square. It's not perfect, but it'll look good enough. So I um, filed and sanded all these edges smooth. So now I can install the window, which has had hole cut in it for an 80 millimeter fan and over that I have one of these mesh filters and one of these um, little custom grills so I think that'll look pretty good when it's done so as for how the window will be attached I'm thinking I'm going to use epoxy around the edges and see how that holds all right the epoxy is set you can see it around the edges there but it doesn't show up from the other side. So that turned out looking really nice, I think. Now, next up is getting rid of that boring stock fan and putting in this much better looking aluminum fan instead. These Atta brand fans are actually really good quality and long lasting, so I might find another place to use this eventually, but just not in this computer. And there it is. Now next up, I want to get all the drives installed in there, so just got to pull off the front panel, which is easy to do. A little tug there pull it off from there. So there's the Sunbeam Rio bus fan controller. So it has a Molex power input and then four three pin outputs for the fans. So that gives me some nice individual control of each one as well as the ability to turn them off if I need, if I ever want. Okay, that takes care of all that. Just pop that back on. And whenever the DVD drive ejects, it'll automatically flip out this little door here, which snaps back up. And now to put the motherboard in. And as for the uh, cable from the heatsink fan, so that is just a three pin that plugs into the motherboard there, and then it has a little speed controller. But I think this motherboard actually has its own built-in speed control, so I'm gonna leave the 
knob set to its highest speed for now. And if I find that that is not needed, then I should be able to turn it down. Okay, so there's that in there, and before I do anything else, I think I should get on to sleeving some cables. Now to really get those cables sleeved properly, I need to open up the power supply. Right, the cover lifts off. While I'm in there, might as well also add a blue LED fan just to light things up even more. There, that ought to look good. I've got the wire ends ready to go into the power supply, so I'll take care of that when I'm putting this back together. In the meantime, first I need to cut all these cable ties. I'm gentle so that I don't accidentally damage any of the actual wires. For the cable sleeving kit, they give you a whole bundle of all different sizes of sleeving, as well as heat shrink tubing, and then a whole bunch of these uh, cable ties, cable zip ties to use later, once so it's all put together. And the way that this braided sleeving works is when you push it together like that, it expands way out so that you can fit it around different bundles of cables, and it makes it a lot easier to um, get on too. One of the great things about this sleeving is it expands far enough that you can just push it straight over most of your average connectors and get it on a little bit at a time. That way you don't have to worry about removing all the pins from these connectors to slide things directly over the wires. And then the heat shrink slides over just the same and you get that around the braid Get everything nice and evened out and hit that with the heat gun and it shrinks down real nice and tight. All right, sleeving is all done for the power supply. Now for the SATA and Molex connectors, I did have to remove the connectors in order to get the sleeving on there, but uh, those are fortunately pretty easy to do, unlike the uh, power supply connector would have been. And the fan. It also installed and working in there, and I gave that a quick test, and everything seems to be wired correctly, so I'll just finish a little more sleeving on a couple more wires in the case and get onto the rest of the assembly. I think I've gotten done all the sleeving that I want to do, so now it's just a matter of getting things put together and plugged in. And for the side panel, I got a Pivia green LED fan. I used the blue LED fans in my first computer build of this same size and blade style. These turn about 1400 RPM at their top speed and they're extremely quiet as far as um, crystal LED fans go. So these have been some of my favorites for a long time for this type of fan. But anyway, let's put this onto its side. There, so there's the... Uh, USB cables and this is the audio cable here. The audio port is right here but after reading through the motherboard's manual I found that this is a one or the other system where as long as the jumpers are plugged in the rear audio ports will work but if you unplug those to put in the front audio connector then you'll no longer get anything out of the back. At least that's the way that things look so I just bundled all these together and we'll have that one kind of tucked out of the way. Next up, let's get this floppy cable in here. So this will be one of the only really ugly cables. Not much you can do about that. Kind of hard to sleeve a ribbon cable. Okay. Well, actually, we'll put this underneath the blue ones. So at least help to hide it a little bit. be better. Okay, now some of these old CD and DVD drives have three cables, 
One is this small one for audio, and then you get the ribbon cable, and then the power cable. So I'll start with the audio cable here, and this plugs in right down here. Now for the ribbon cable, I do have this nice looking black one. I fold this? Maybe, maybe I can go this way. Yeah, I think this will work. So that's tucked away up top, so that won't really be visible most of the time. You just have the main cable coming flat down this way. That should at least look all right. And for the hard drive, this SATA cable. Let's bring that around there. Hide the rest of the way in the bay. Plug it in this way. Alright, so that's all the devices hooked up. Let me screw that on easily. Okay, that's ready to go on. Feed this bundle of cables through. And slide that in. Now I can get all the power cables hooked up. Let's see, I also have to connect one of these to that uh, Sunbeam controller in there, so it's going to be a little interesting to reach. That should work. And this one finally goes to the floppy drive. There, that just leaves one unused. is plugged in. Now that leaves the graphics card, which I'll start with the 7300 GT, and I went ahead and sleeved the cable on that too. Might as well match everything else. Looks like that CD cable got in the way. Just gotta move that. There, now it should be fine. good. Okay. All right, and then this I'll plug into one of the ports on the fan controller. All right, so there's everything hooked up. Got a nice little mess in there, so I'll see if I can tie a few more things out of the way with these extra little blue zip ties. A lot of room in the back of this case, but not really much to do with it. So I'll just stick the side of the panel back on there. Now before I close it up, I almost forgot. I need to put in these cathode lights. Oops. There, so that's the inverter box right there. And the cathodes themselves. And these were pre-sleeved. By, by Performance PCs. I actually got most of the old parts for this computer from them. 
So it's really great that they still have a lot of this stuff in stock. So I think I'll place this one up here and this one down here somewhere, maybe on the floor. And that should light it up really good. And now for one last thing, the Star Force fan. And I powered this up before um, even starting to do anything with it, and this has got to be one of the dumbest fans I've ever purchased. It's noisy, the fan controller barely works. The uh, total adjustment range between uh, full and high is basically within this area of the knob, and the rest of it is either all the way low or all the way high. There's only a very tiny range there where you can actually adjust the speed. But I'm going to put it in anyway because it's fun. So I 3D printed this bracket here. I thought of making one from sheet metal, but I decided I was a little too lazy for that and just let the machine do it. Well, just one thing left to do. Hook up the fan here to this connector that I have coming from the fan controller. All right. Let's see if I can drop this down on here a little bit, maybe. Yeah, that should look fine. Slide it on and screw this in place. So there's my 2000s gaming PC all built up and ready to go. So I guess the next thing will be hooking up a monitor, keyboard and mouse and seeing if this actually works and plays some games. All right, I've got it hooked up to my old Scepter 19 inch monitor, gaming USB keyboard and mouse, and then these uh, SoundSoul um, water jet speakers that I picked up like five years ago but never used. So let's start this thing up. See if it works. <laughs> I've got all the fans at full to start, but I think I can pull some of them back. Got an image on the screen, so that's a good sign. I think I'll turn some of these down right now. Maybe down to half speed. Okay, let's see in the DVD drive as well as the hard drive. Of course, there's no Windows installation right now, so I'll have to get that on there. Man, those green lights are really bright in there. But you still get a little bit of contrast from the blue from above and from the heat sink the fan there. I heard the DVD tray trying to eject. Ah, there it goes. Wait, no. There it goes. And one of the problems with some of these old um, DVD, CD drives and such, pretty much all of them have a belt drive for the tray ejector. This one I can see the belt right here. And if those get old, they can dry out over time and lose their grip. So replacing that belt might help the ejection to work properly again, but for now I'll just have to use the pen. Now let's see if this will install Windows. It should. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. So far so good. Press enter to install. Of course. Hmm. Okay, that's a problem. All right, so after checking things out, it seems like that hard drive isn't working. It just kind of locks up the boot screen at this point, and I can't even get to the um, Windows startup menu with the DVD drive as long as it's plugged in, so I'm gonna see about getting a replacement for that. All right, I got another Velociraptor hard drive. This one, 160 gigabytes. But after deleting a GPT partition that was on there for some reason, everything seems to be working just the way it should. So that'll format for XP, and then everything should install just the way that it's supposed to. And this is going to take a while. All right, just about copied onto there, so the actual installation can start.
And now on to phase two of the installation. It's been a while since I've seen that loading bar. Yep, it says 39 minutes, but I'm guessing it's going to go quicker than that. We'll see though. Almost done with the installation here, and I think this has only been about 10 or 11 minutes total, so that's almost four times faster than the estimated 39 minutes. And this should be the last reboot to complete the installation. That has got to be one of the fastest hard drives I've used for an XP computer. All working good. And that amazing XP graphic. And there we go, a working Windows XP gaming computer. Now all I've got to do is install some drivers, and to do that, I think I'll download them using my main computer and then transfer them to this using a USB drive. All right, I think I've got all the drivers installed correctly, so I'll just give it its last little restart here. The sound definitely works. <laughs> Those water jets are too much fun. All right, let's see how this all works. This video driver doesn't work until you restart the computer. We'll see how quickly this boots, too. So far, so good. So a quick way to test out the uh, video is just to bring up a uh, computer here and drag it around, and yep, that is working. Because when I was dragging this around before, it would just uh, refresh about every half second like that around the screen. So, seems like everything is functioning. So, time to install some games and see how it does. I love these classic installation screens. Let's see if we can cause some trouble in town. I probably won't keep these water jets on all the time. They'll probably get irritating after a while, but they're still fun now and then. <laughs> uh, the graphics aren't as good as I remember. <laughs> Doesn't look bad though. Cadillac, Shrek, Beetle. I forgot how few cars this game had. Ten total. Let's just take the Beetle around. And that loaded fast. Okay. Hmm. Some trouble with the graphics there, so I'm gonna turn up the lighting quality, but uh. There we go. Okay, yeah, that's a moose too. Looks like there's still some little graphics glitches around. I think I can find a way to work that out. Just have to check some settings here and there. Toast here. 
Oh yeah, I'm dead. And now running Lego Island. Just carry a little more there. Go. Now that would be low sound quality even on a good set of speakers. <laughs> Back when I was really little, this opening looked amazing. Just like always, the LEGO game designers had way too much fun making this. Oh, <laughs> let's see if I can correct that. Here we go, quick change of settings, and it looks like it'll work now. I actually crashed the computer while I was working on this before. <laughs> okay, there we go. Yeah, it's working. The thing that impresses most people is my memory. I can remember anything. I'm remembering this right now. I just said, the thing that impresses most people is my memory. Pretty good, huh? Let's see if I can remember how to get around. Huh. There we go. Mouse control. On the first computer I played this on, I think that it got about four, maybe five frames per second. But I dealt with it because that's just the way things were. This is probably about the best that it's ever looked for me. Let's see if Simcopter works. I even found the old list of cheat codes. that most cursor is, I'd say that this is running at a very, very high resolution. Oh. Ah, I don't control. Oh, it's shaky. It seems to be working. What a great soundtrack for this game. Classical, but then also a lot of joke commercials and just other music to go along with it. Oops. Oops. Oh, that went well. Just trying out SimCity 2000 here, and this requires 24 megabytes of space. I don't know if I can fit all that on this hard drive. Seems to be working so far. I forgot the sound of this game changes depending on what MIDI driver your computer has. Yeah, let's see... Yeah, they've got some already made cities, so let's just check out one of these. set on. There we go. Turn that down to turtle speed so that I can actually see what's going on. Oh. in here, isn't it? Oh, whoops. Someone crashed a plane into one of these towers. <laughs> well, that's cool that that works. I've got Midtown Madness 2 here. Let's see, no sound. Well, no music anyway. Uh, there we go. All right, let's go for another cruise here. San Francisco, also got London. Let's go for San Francisco. Still pretty low graphics. It was already kind of a, it's already kind of a jump over the first one. If there's one thing I remember about this game is that you can, <laughs> of 
Quite a few people made patches to update the graphics and add other really detailed cars to this game. You get a way larger selection too. Including the brand new at the time, Audi TT. Great car. For now, let's go with the Mini Cooper. Francisco. Yeah, this game the pedestrians aren't glitching out. First bit of madness that glitching those on the screen, it was the uh, pedestrians, so switch them off, the game looks a lot better. Get my speedometer on there. My engine's totally fine, there's no problem. Right then, next game. And the Star Wars Rogue Squadron. Looking good so far. Let's see how it is getting into the actual game. We got the X Wing. I think this was also a PlayStation game, as well as the N64. I've never played it on either of those consoles though, so I wonder where it looked best, or if this looks similar to those or not. Alright, that's easy Good enough. Time, Arrow keys, space bar. This is probably way better with a controller. Well, I didn't do terrible. Now another one of the great driving games of the 90s, Streets of Sim City. One of the cool things about this game, SimCopter and, Sim and SimCity 2000, is that they were all linked to each other. So if you created a city in SimCity 2000, then you could play in that city in this game or SimCopter. You can even use this game to set up your own custom race courses within the SimCity 2000 created city. So it's all, it all a really cool integrated system that they had. Angel Cops. <laughs> the opening for this was great. Really limited characters. <laughs> all right. Got all your different missions here. Looks like this is all I've got for now. Let's see what upgrades I can put on this. Well, slick. Yeah, the Mine Dropper and Missile Launcher. So I've got 5,000 to spend, so... So I'll start with... Well, everything seems to be working smoothly so far. Are there any graph settings I can change? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. So he starts out normal, and then he gets destroyed. And your mission is to basically just earn money. And you've got, oh. Okay. Well, I'll probably have to mess around with some settings. Now, for probably the oldest game that I have here, Sim Tower. Let's see, what's going on here? Yeah, run it.
Boom. Hello. Not fast mode. <laughs> nope, this runs in windowed mode only. Let's see if I can stretch it out at all. This game ran perfectly on our super old Windows 3.1 computer. I used to be able to make some pretty impressive towers on here. There we go, now we've got people. Moving into the offices and the condos. This game's a lot better if you can get the sound going, but... It's nice just to be able to play it again. Now for another old game. Of course, they're all old. This one's from the mid-90s. It's called Genome. It's made to be kind of competition to Mech Warrior, I believe. Uh block. See how this works on here. <laughs> so none of the video files work on this game. I remember it's a, because it uses a video format that was abandoned after like Windows 98. But the rest of the game should work perfectly fine. It's just those uh, cinematics. Might have to find a way to get those working. I'm not getting any sound for some reason. Well, at least the game sounds. Well, maybe I can run some compatibility mode settings or something. Get that going. But yeah, you uh, drive your uh, mech thing around shoot lasers and missiles and machine guns and all sorts of stuff. It's honestly a pretty fun game. I don't know, maybe it's the motherboard's um, sound chip, so I might try finding some kind of a cheap sound card to go with this computer, but uh, things are still working pretty well so far beyond that. Oh, it does have working sound as Earthworm Jim. This game doesn't even install on here. You just uh, put the CD in and start playing. <laughs> yeah, where are the controls? Well, another thing to figure out later, but... That works. And now just one more game for this video. I've got The Sims Unleashed installed. I haven't been able to play this in a long time because it just doesn't work correctly on my newer computers. It gets into this infinite loading loop where I can't even get into a city to start working with anything. But on Windows XP, it should work perfectly. Yeah, here's the uh, loading thing here, and that would just get into an infinite loop that never stopped, so I couldn't even play the game. Yeah, this is working perfectly. Yeah, it's been so long since I've been able to play this game. Yeah, just the simplicity with building homes and playing your sim. This is just the most fun to me of all the different sim games, and I've gone up through three. Never got into four, just because I had all the other ones. Zoom in on that guy. I think that's all the tutorial I need. Nah. Well this is great that I can finally have this and so many other old games going again. So I'm really excited about this build. It's just a uh, fun and nostalgia for me. And now it's starting to get late and sun's going down so I think it's about time I get into doing some nighttime shots of the computer to show off all those bright lights in there. <laughs> 